Welcome back. Happy Tuesday. And I am so excited because we have part two of me and Chad's rekindling of the flame. <laughs> and the codependency continues. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. Coco loco. <laughs> Perfect. All right. What do you think? I don't know. Because I think of like boundaries. Like how do you create those healthy boundaries I mean, for yourself? I mean, I... I mean, I think it takes a lot of self-awareness. I mean, I, I think everyone's working on it. Mm-hmm. It's easier to do from the jump, though. So I feel like as it's hard. Yes, it's hard. You can't, you can't go enter back. into a relationship with no boundaries. And right. then a year later, that's what I say, like romantically, right. which I guess I should apply friendship too. But like you, when you go into it with no boundaries, you can't look back in a year and say, well, no, I need these boundaries. Because I think a lot of people weaponize boundaries. Right. Yeah. They can. And then if you just don't, it's just so hard to rewrite those because then people are like, well, what's wrong with you? You've changed. And you're like, no, I just wasn't doing it right the first time. But like, think about someone you have had a friendship with your whole life. And like, you know, it's, it's just so hard to go back and rewrite those. Whereas a new friend now, or like a work relationship or a relationship, they say one thing to me. I'm like, I, it ain't me. Yeah. Well, also you have good, you have good, healthy boundaries. You'll say no real quick. I we have never, better ones we now. have yeah. never had healthy boundaries no. with each other. We just, but it wasn't easy. But when a moment in life happened, and it was so immensely traumatic and stressful yeah. for the both of us, and our lives changed yep. overnight. Yeah, that's when instead of us relying on each other and communicating better. But to be quite honest, you were pulled in one direction, and I was pulled in the other. Yeah. There were times that we weren't even at the house at the same time, but yeah. we were just both doing everything we could just to survive. Yeah. And so there was really no room for us to communicate. Maybe there was. I, I don't really know. I just know that. But also, too, I, I did. I heard a saying that was like talking about repairing relationships mm-hmm. and rearranging your relationship furniture. Mm-hmm. Like, rearranging just like you do in a house like Mm -hmm. things change like you move houses you have to figure out how to rearrange your furniture you Mm -hmm. have to and it's the same thing when you're in relationship with someone friendship Mm -hmm. relationship whatever like people change Mm -hmm. and it's okay for people to change and it's okay to have growth it's okay to have setback Mm -hmm. so we have to be realistic which is where i was terribly wrong Mm -hmm. and like thinking are i'm a creature of habit you yeah. know me i'll go to the same three restaurants and i don't go nowhere else Girl, corner pub do <laughs> i know corner pub halls that's about it yeah and so but that's not life mm-hmm. like life is forever evolving and changing mm-hmm. and the quicker like we as humans figure out how to rearrange that relationship furniture uh-huh. and emotional furniture i feel like the more realistic, like you're not setting yourself up for disappointment at that point uh-huh. yeah. because sure we can look back and say, Hey, it was great. I loved uh-huh. these memories with you, but look like we've changed mm-hmm. or we, we need yeah. something different. Yeah. Right. Like instead of you, like now I have a guest bedroom upstairs you can sleep in instead of the trundle right next to my yeah. bed. Right. Like a codependency thing. Right. Being well, like we can exist a little bit further away yeah. in this yeah. situation than you were. <laughs> and for me, cause this was big for me to separate, myself in a survival mode i will say this i will do the work when i need to to survive yeah so but you're like you wait till it's too late right but this last year it was traumatic for me hardest year of my life yeah uh hands down um just being being a part of your family the things that your mom and dad went through in january then us coming home and then me separating my friendship from you and then it just keep getting worse then becoming really close with nick and then nick passing away and then being in kind of in the middle of that and not knowing how to emotionally handle it and handle because we haven't spoken that was very traumatic for me and i was just doing the best i could to keep my head above water but i will say in the moments of all that when i was doing it i was working on having healthier boundaries because i knew that if this ever happened, I wanted to have healthier boundaries just so I can have healthier friendships and yeah. relationships in my life and even f- things with my family. So I've caught myself many times, gratefully. Um, and if anybody's listening, this is nothing against you, but like, you know, people call and ask you to 
watch their dogs or cats or whatever. And I'm allergic, but I would still go do that shit for a weekend. And that was stuffed up and couldn't breathe, you know, and, but I would do it. And so I've caught myself saying yes, but then calling them back and saying, you know what? I, I, I'm allergic. I shouldn't be doing this. So I have been working on correcting. Talk about a lack of boundaries. I don't have any. Yeah. So I have been this past year, been working on saying no a lot more and it has made me feel better and those people are still around and those people don't but, think of me any differently yeah well that's the biggest thing is you again shocker like how we're very similar is there were times in both of our lives to where we didn't have the ability to say no mm -hmm. like it just kind of we had to take what came to us yeah and therefore it's hard to set that boundary to say no because you were mm -hmm. never taught like, hey, you can say no or you can mm -hmm. do this or whatever. But then it's like the moment you learn to say no, like you said this past year, the mm -hmm. moment you learn to set boundaries, it literally feels like you're taking a little bit of yourself back. Mm -hmm. And it's the most empowering feeling to be at for someone to say something. You'd be like, actually, no, like mm -hmm. that's not OK with me. Yeah. And that's OK. Mm -hmm. Like. There are so many people in life, though, that will look at you and be like, oh, you're a bitch. You're this. You're that. Mm -hmm. Like, because you said no. Mm -hmm. No. That's called having healthy boundaries. Right. And people who love and respect you will be okay with we'll that. Love and respect you still. And the ones that get mad at you, the people that get mad at you for create, the people who get mad at you for setting boundaries are the same people who benefited from you not having any. That's yep. a, that's so true. That is true. And I've come to find that out. And even though last year was the hardest year of my life, hardest year of yeah. your life. Heck yeah. I will say this year, thank God, it started off a lot better. Yeah. I feel better about myself. I'm in a much better headspace. Um, you know, and we're here and you know, I'm grateful. So it I just <clears throat> it's crazy like looking back on it though i'm like did we really go that long without talking over some dumb like dumb shit that's not that's, what it is but also too i think <clears throat> nick dying also put a lot into perspective uh-huh yeah like, that was i still cannot believe he's not here yeah it's very strange it is i can't and people always thought me and him didn't like each other and that was never the case either just so y'all know yeah like well people we, weren't, we didn't hang out a lot made that <clears throat> Because well, they were like, always would think you and I are like sleeping together. I'm like, y'all, right. like, no. Yeah, like, come on now. <laughs> I don't know. But have the what thing it about it is, is this Nick and I were friends, but we weren't close. Yeah. Because me and her were close. You know, when now, when they were dating and stuff, we all were close. I mean, if you saw any of our vacation pictures, and listen, I didn't ask to go. They asked me to go. It's just like so that saying, like, bros before hoes. Right. You know? So, like, me and her and Nick would go on vacations together and stuff. They went on their own vacation some. Yeah. But it wasn't like me and me and Nick were never, has ne have never been at war. No. But, but when her and Nick separated and broke up, I was best friends with her. So, I couldn't be super close with him. And to you know a lot of people saying? don't realize too the timing of all that either mm -hmm. is like we were so on and off, on and mm -hmm. off. And it wasn't until after we dropped dad off mm -hmm. that like Nick and I finally it was like the end of January of twenty twenty three. Right. End of January probably that we were like, All right, no more talking. Right. Was and, really Right. And so when Wait, Chad, make sure you stay talking to Savannah and don't talk to the audience unless you're really trying to make a point. Oh yeah. So the thing about it is when, um, when Nick, so I was never really close with Nick. We didn't hang out a lot, yeah. stuff like that, because you and I were friends. Yeah. But when our friendship fell apart and it really kind of ended and exploded with me and Nick hanging out that yeah. night unintentionally, it was kind of trauma bonding. It was though, me Nick. and Nick. Yeah. kind of started hanging out and then we became close but we've yeah. always been friends i've always cut his hair yeah. it's not like we were ever like no. ah, you know and the public sometimes would always be like nick and chad it, she's never gonna be happy with anybody and i was like yeah. it's not it's not me boo yeah I literally also had like different it was like you everyone involved in the entire situation with <clears throat> todd and julie had varying levels of trauma uh -huh. like I like some the lowest, like uh -huh. I would say of this, of the people in your family, like, yes, Van, I had to watch you go through a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. And I have like very distinct memories of like Grayson turning around and looking at me when they were giving the sentencing, like I get the chills, yeah. like, but I had the lowest probably degree of trauma of the people in y'all's 
like family and circle, but like I felt it. And then talk yeah. about you get closer and closer. You're on Chad and Nick's level. Well, you have, you guys have your own level of trauma, but it is still below hers. Oh, so totally. who are you going to talk to? No, I, I'm just saying like yeah. the reason that you trauma bond is cause you're not going to go to Savannah and be like, I'm going through shit. She's going to be like, same yeah. plus a million. You so you've got to talk to people. someone on yeah. that same level of trauma. And you yeah. guys weren't that for each other. Cause yours was too bad, but you had it too. It was much closer to Nick's though. Yeah. 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 And I mean, Nick drove you and your dad and Grayson and I drove your mom and Chase and yeah. Papa Harvey and Annie and Emmy at the time, yeah. you know? And so besides all of that, but you I just know, think like, when I do Nick, believe that put it in perspective it when did. it happened. That whole thing did. And mm -hmm. I think for me, what really put that into perspective is I think some of the biggest regrets that I have are like things that I said about Nick or vented about or podcast, whatever. And I used my platform to fight back publicly when I should have done it privately. Mm -hmm. And I think when Nick, when Nick died, it was, I don't know. Two months maybe before he died, which now we laugh about because we laughed at his funeral about it, of when I sent him that song. Mm -hmm. And what people like don't realize, but I sent Nick a song by Brett Young that was like, maybe we said goodbye too soon. Mm -hmm. And I always thought like, all right, you know what? Time's going to go by. Like, we'll find our way back. Mm -hmm. Like, that was always in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. And... Then Nick responded with a message that was crafted by Chad. And I knew it was crafted by Chad. I knew it. <laughs> and, but like, it was funny because, you know, he was dating someone. Um, just the way the message was crafted, I knew it was by Chad. But I think the whole thing, like we can laugh about all this. Yeah. But what it really did to me was like, and that's something I'm still trying to deal with, honestly. Mm -hmm is just knowing that like I let so much time when Nick and I pass mm -hmm. that if I would have said something sooner, like uh. maybe he wouldn't have died before we got right a chance to talk or, and that made it like for you and I, I mm -hmm. think that put it into perspective of like, I don't want to lose another person. Right. Like I don't want someone else uh, to die and mm -hmm me feel the way that I feel and make the same mistakes that I've made. Right. And that was really yeah, the kind big of put stuff in perspective for sure. Yeah. I'm so excited to partner with the skin research Institute because they have the most amazing products. I actually used the blow dryer in order to dry my hair today, but now that my hair is dried, we have got to put some curl in it. This right here is the Supra 3-in-1 Super Curl Rotating Iron, and I am so excited to be using it because first off, there's three different barrels. So you guys know, I switch my hair all the time. Sometimes it's long, sometimes it's short. So when it's long, I'll use the large barrel. When it's short, I use the medium, sometimes small barrel, depending on what kind of look I want. It's also ceramic. And for those that don't know, ceramic will actually make your curls last longer. Y'all know I have burned my hair off before. Literally, I have, and it was so traumatizing. Sometimes we leave our hair in the curling iron for a little too long, and that's why the beeps are absolutely amazing. This curling iron will actually beep once at eight seconds, twice at 12 seconds, and three times at 16 seconds. All right, I'm gonna show you guys how I do this next curl, and then I'm going to speed through the rest of it so I can show you the final result. Done. Absolutely amazing. All right, y'all. So obviously I said I love a beachy wave. And so therefore I brush my hair out at the very end. That's kind of like my trick. I will brush it out. I'll tease it a little bit because I don't like super tight curls. That's just not the look that I like to rock, but hey, some people do. 
The Supra 3-in-1 Rotating Curling Iron is absolutely amazing. And you know it wouldn't be me if I didn't give you a code. So I'm going to put the special code here on the screen. Hurry up, go shop. Also, to make your life even easier, you can purchase this product through this video right now on Shopify. You've talked about Savannah too, like before y'all move on from this, is that like grief is love with nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. And so you just have, I, I think you and I have talked about that, so I've, I think you sent me that quote at some point. Yeah. It's just like, it's this, there's nowhere to put it. Like, right. of course you still always love to Nick and the grieving part is like, but I like, I have some left that I didn't get to say, like reparations I wish I had gotten or to make. like anger is grief with nowhere to go, maybe. Was... No, grief is love with nowhere to go. Yeah, okay, yeah, you're, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, you just made me think of that and you've talked about that. And I think that's what the case was with Nick is just you had things that the petty stuff is what came to the surface, but underneath all of that was always love from you. Oh, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. And listen, he knew, he knew that. Yeah. You know, even though Nick knew how much you you did love him and he loved you and he loved your family. But in this, in that moment in his life, he felt like he just needed to move on and you needed to move on. That's just where y'all yeah. were mentally we in y'all's relationship. Yeah, we both were like, it's But there time. still was a, 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 you know, a, what do you call that thing where you pay two people on the sides and there's a thing in the middle. And you, a, tug of war. Tug there was war. a tug yeah. of war, queen. You know, and so it just so happened that when he passed, you were on the opposite end of the tug of war because sometimes he was tugging on you and sometimes you were tugging on him. And yeah. so... When I helped him write that, because you didn't realize, and you may have known in that text, that he and I were hanging out and it had become close. Because again... No, I just knew the way the text was written. I was like, that's not him. Yeah, so he called me and he was like, I, you know, what do I say? Because I've kind of seen this girl and I just I just think it's unhealthy and I just want her to leave me alone for a bit. And I was like, well, I said, just tell her you're seeing, you're seeing somebody. I was like, just say that. And he's like, can you just tell me what to say? So then I sent him that text and he sent it to you. And, uh, you know, and then I was like, I feel like, I felt like you were going to know that that was really for me because, you know, like you said, he didn't write stuff like that, but. But I think and that that's what made it so hard was when you really look at life and you look mm -hmm. at the grand scheme of things and you look at these petty fights that you have with people yeah. or misunderstandings and then. It's like, I would give anything in the world to like be able to take back stuff I've said mm -hmm. or to be able to like hug Nick and have another chance. It's like, there's so many things that I look back and I'm like, what if? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't allow there to be one more person in my life that I looked back and I was like, what if I would have treated them better? What if right. I would have said, I'm sorry? What if I would have like mended things? Yeah. And that's what it did. I was like, all right, there cannot be any more time that passes that mm -hmm. like we don't speak. We don't make things right. We mm -hmm. don't. Cause like, I love you too much. I know. I love you too. You know that. Like it just, we've been through it. I've never <laughs> been as close to somebody's boobs and vagina as I have yours with well, self she kind of, She's not very modest. Yeah. Either. I mean, there's not an inch. I mean, people would think we have daddy cause I have yeah. seen every part of her. She's like, come in here real quick. I'm just on the phone. And she's like on the phone right. in the shower. Like and shaving. don't come at us with all this stuff. Like, oh, oh that's no. weird. That's gross. Like, mind your business. Yeah, thank you, um, thank you. But you know, there's that was just our friendship, and obviously, I love you. But again, it, it and I'll say it like I say to everybody else that I've done this to. It may not in that moment have felt like love, but it was. Yeah. Because I felt like if I didn't, a, I was not going to be okay. Yeah. B, we were not going to be okay if I didn't take some separation and have some time and take care of myself and my emotions. And even though in the back of my mind, it was hard and I was worried for you, I felt like you did have all your family here or most of your family. And I felt like they'll jump in where I've jumped out and, you know, things like that. And so I just, in that moment, because I don't have family here, you know what I mean? And I don't, I mean, I have friends here, don't get me wrong, but I really reclused. Yeah really besides hanging out with Nick, because I still had to talk about it with somebody and he was the only person that would have understood because he knew you best, just like I knew you best, Yeah, you know? And so it was just where it and landed. And I think too though, but that's also a good point to make is like for people, cause I'm so guilty of this, of like making this 
coming to this conclusion that like, oh, they're going to be fine because they have all these people around. Mm -hmm. But there's so many people that I see in life that have so many people around or they may have family Mm -hmm. around or they may have, but they don't really have them. Mm -hmm. You know, like just because there's a body there doesn't mean that someone is being emotionally cared for. Right. Or being looked after or... Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I that's why I have such anger and resentment in my life. Because mm-hmm. I have family members who just haven't shown up. Right. Who haven't helped. Who I felt so alone. I've had to lay there at night and cry and be like, I don't know how I'm going to take care of all this that I have to take care of and do all these things. And people know, like, and I'll put out little feelers mm-hmm. and be like, yeah, so I've got this to do and that to do. And you'd think someone would be like, oh, well, let me help you. But like, I don't. And it just goes to show that like what people go through, like Mm -hmm. people go through stuff and people, but like you and I are the same. Mm -hmm. Like I cannot tell you how many times I've sat there and I'm like, I I don't know how I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm like, feel like I'm drowning. It's like my therapist says it's high functioning depression. It's just like, you just do it. But like, I may seem fun. I may seem like everything's okay. I may seem, but it's people that seem like that, that maybe yeah. need a little extra checking up on. Yeah. There's a thing I saw on social media and it's a guy and he talks about those people that are overly happy. Those people that are overly like their life is together. Those are the people you need to check on mm-hmm. because yeah. that is us. And I will say, obviously I'm not saying people worry about me or stuff, but you know, I'm still, I'm still not okay. I'm still working on things and uh, people will say, Oh my God, I wish I had your energy. Oh my God. I wish I was so happy as you. I'm not always as happy. Yeah. I struggle mentally yeah. with my life, with my choices, with again, not having healthy boundaries with being alone, um, different things like that, but you would never know it to be around me. Do y'all, so, do y'all both still feel alone right now? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I'm 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 okay being alone right now for myself personally because I'm not strong enough to have healthy boundaries to not be able to fall right back into who I was mm-hmm. with everybody. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. But do you also think though that I don't know how to say no right that, now still. But that's no I don't know. I, cuz I hear that and I'm like, well, is that like you're not allowing yourself to get close to people for mm. that reason? Like you don't know how to tell people what you need. So it's easier just to stay away. Yeah. Cause like whether what you need and what you can't take, like mm-hmm. not only what you need from someone, but also what you can't take from someone, mm-hmm. like just the boundary part and then the need part. But those are both like, you Cause still like need I, things. I don't know if you know how to express them. And I, Savannah, you don't really either. I mean, you in in points of desperation have, you know, but you still don't really ask for help. You just open up enough to let someone know what's bothering you. And then I can sneak in the doorway or Tyler can sneak in the doorway or Chad or whoever, Mm -hmm. but you don't really know how to express what, I don't think either of you can express what you need and I'm not great at it either, but I think I just think when I hear you say that it makes me sad because it's like, well, you're not allowing people in or allowing Mm -hmm. people to get close. And so therefore I'm just going to be lonely because I can't set the boundaries. Right. And maybe that's it. You know, it's not, it's not so much because I'm starting to last year. I could not last year. I mean, I didn't, I didn't go home at all for anything. I didn't go home. I saw no one. I did not see my family. I did not go home for Christmas. I was by myself for Thanksgiving intentionally. I invited you. Um, you did invite me. You did Absolutely. invite me. P- people invited me, but I intentionally did not go home. Um, yeah. I, I I just I just engulfed myself in my work and in working on myself. So this year, I will say I still feel lonely, but I am allowing myself to be out there more and talk to people and stuff like that and talk to a couple guys right now. I mean, I don't think anything's going to come out of it, but <laughs> that's fine. You know, it's a still distraction. A little rest- and, still a little rusty dusty. Yeah, but and once I'm again, at least putting myself back out there. Once again, we're the same person. Yeah. We're the same person. Yeah. That you, What kind of like, 
Is it still giving you clarity to be alone that much, Chad, or is it just protecting you? Mm, say that one more time. Is being alone right now giving you clarity or is it just protecting you? God, I think it's Ooh. just protecting me. I don't, I, I, there are There is clarity that's coming from it. And I will say this, and again, I don't, I, I don't want people to worry about me, but I needed to change myself and have healthier boundaries or I was going to be in a dark place and would not be able to get out of it. I know myself well enough yeah. because I am always here, but I don't have a middle ground. I'm either really happy and in a good mood all the time or I'm very down. And when I get down, it's hard for me to get back up mentally. That is something that runs in my family. So, uh, you know, I am protecting myself, but I'm, I am aware enough. And what, I don't think I would ever be the person to not say I need help yeah. if it got to that place. Yeah. But I know right now I'm working on trying to just be a better version of myself so that I can be not that I was never a good person to people, but I'm too good yeah. to everyone. I spread myself so mm -hmm. thin that I have I don't do anything for myself. Well, you know, I don't was... take any time for myself. And yeah. even with my finances, I'll give it all away to everybody <laughs> else and never have anything. And I work my ass off. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's frustrating. Yeah, I mean, you've already fit. You've already done that. Like your yeah. job is. Like you're thriving. I'm very successful. Yeah. Just so all y'all know. Because <laughs> people are is. like, oh, of course he left when things got hard. You know, after everything they've done for him. And y'all have done so much for me. But what people don't know behind the scenes is I've done just as much. Yeah. And I've never asked for anything. No. I've never, you know, I'm, I'm very okay on my own. Yeah. But I, you know, uh, I have to work on, again, it's never anything... You know, I just have, I have work to do and I'm working yeah. on it. So well, I that's think it. there was a therapist that I talked to gave me like some of the best advice when I was struggling with creating boundaries. Mm. And they said, create a list of like your non-negotiables, mm -hmm. like your non-negotiables in a friendship, your non-negotiables in a romantic relationship. Mm -hmm. And like, those are your non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. Like, does not matter what day, what time, birthday, holiday, whatever. Like, these are the things that I'm not okay with. Or these are the things that I need. Mm -hmm. And you have that to remind yourself of, like, when you're questioning, making a decision, you're like, wait, like, that's my non-negotiable and I know it. And it holds me accountable. Yeah. Damn, I need to start doing that. Because mm -hmm. it I don't does. You're going to be able to like, reintegrate people back into your life, Chad. I mean, we're acting yeah. like you're a recluse that doesn't come out of a, a cave, but like. Yeah, I, I do. I, I'm not sitting at home, no. you know, carving out a bear out of wood. You no, know what I'm but saying? But if you it's don't awesome. know how to protect yourself, you're never going to, like, you're not going to continue to reintegrate back in the world with people and navigate with them instead of just. You're going to have, like, stay away. I feel like when you right. do that, though, it's like you're, like, just people in general, when you're so mm -hmm. afraid of getting hurt, you just surround yourself mm -hmm. with like, not saying not good friends, but just mm -hmm. like right. acquaintances or people to waste time or well, like less meaningful relationships. Yeah. Well, again, there was a friendship that developed out of Nick passing, which was Cody yeah. from Cody Card Details, Cody Newbery. He's a really good person. He's become one of my best him. guy friends. I trust him. He's been really there for me as I have been for him because Nick was one of his best friends, you know? And so I'm not saying I've just been alone. I've just kind of switched it up and it was easier for me to hang out with somebody new and yeah. to have those boundaries for yeah. myself than to hang out. Cause we're creatures of habit. So yeah. we want to do the same things we're always used to doing with people. So it was easier for me to start hanging out with other people that I could say no or have healthier boundaries or be like, I can't do that. Or, you know, it felt like for me, I needed to do that. That's just, I don't know. It's probably not the way that it should be, but it's what I thought I needed to do. I think they also don't know as much. Yeah, they don't. So it's easier. Like if Savannah wants to escape something, mm. like she's not going to pick, she wants to totally escape what's going on. I'm not going to damn Aaron. Mm -mm. Because, <laughs> yeah. because, because I'm too worried that I'm, 
I need to know what's wrong. Right. And I'm not saying that, yeah. not saying your good friends can't be like, okay, you just need to shake it off tonight. You don't want to talk about shit. No problem. But you feel it more around the people that know more. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I know people, friends have done it to me. I've probably done it to other friends where I'm like, I can't be around you because you make me feel that because you know it. Yeah. And I think maybe it's boundaries. Um, but I think it also might just be that some of your closest friends know too much. Yeah. It's so that true. Is so true. I don't know. I think the biggest lesson from all of it is just like life is so short mm -hmm. and communicate when it's hard communicate mm -hmm. like even at times to where I don't know. I just feel like communication for me is key because like, I wish I could communicate with Nick. I mm -hmm. wish I could communicate with other people. Like, so even as hard as life gets or situations like communicate, but communicate respectfully with love and like, just because if there's a friendship out there mm -hmm. for you that you've lost or a relationship and you wish you would have done things differently, it's okay to say, Hey, I was wrong. Right. Like that's what I've learned. It's okay. It doesn't mean that there's weakness. Heck, right. admitting that you're wrong shows strength. Right. And it's never too late to rekindle something. If that's mm -hmm. what in your heart, like you want to do, I'm not saying now if there's like an abusive relationship or there's some stay or you should communicate no, through it. And that's stuff, right? totally different. But if it's something to where it, you look back and you're like, that was petty. I don't mm -hmm. even know what we're fighting over anymore. Right. Maybe it's time to kind of circle back around. Right. And you know, I've run into Chloe, I think once at phase and I've saw Grayson a couple of times yeah out and about and it's never weird or anything it yeah. wouldn't be between any of yeah. us it was really just mine and your thing yeah and then but for me i had to disappear for a minute but you know and i disappeared for a minute with your mom but she and i email yeah. and i think her and i talking either even um and i need to get back down there and see her but that helps me to kind of come back to this place as well. Yeah. Because as close as me and you were, me and your mom was, were just as oh, close. Oh yeah. Just on the sidelines in a different way. Way. Yeah. Cause me and your mom really are more of the same age yeah, than me are. and you, me and you are more close as friends and she and I were more close as like kind of companions or, yeah. or just, you know, like, I don't know, in a, in a more adult way <laughs> to a certain degree. <laughs> Not that me and you did, weren't adults, but like we were just kind of those fun friends that did all the fun, cool stuff together. Yeah. And me and your mom had, you know, just a different relationship, but we were very close, mm -hmm. you know. This episode of Unlocked is brought to you by BetterHelp. You guys know I've spoken about BetterHelp time and time and time again, and that's because I am a firm believer in their product. I mean, BetterHelp is absolutely amazing, and it's all online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you do is just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. I don't know about you, but 2024 has started off with quite a bang. And for me, being a single parent, single income household, trying to deal with finances, kids, my own personal mental health, it's all been a huge challenge. I am not going to lie. And that is where therapy and better help has come into play because I have started to realize that if I am not my best self possible, then how in the heck am I going to be able to operate? So that's where I turn to better help. Let's face it. You've got Valentine's coming around the corner. And if you don't have someone, that's okay. You can become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. You can visit betterhelp.com slash Savannah today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Savannah. When it comes to my wardrobe, everyone's always asking, where did I get this or that? Who picked it out? Who dresses me? And believe it or not, I do not have an everyday stylist because let's face it, that's not realistic. <laughs> and second, I have come to love Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix sends styles so good you can feel it. They deliver all the confidence that comes from a truly amazing outfit without any of the work. With Stitch Fix, you actually get a stylist who understands 
understands your style, size, and budget, and they do all the shopping for you. It's the easiest way to transform your wardrobe this season. I know for me, the stylist I got helps to take my wardrobe to the next level. She knows what works for me, sometimes even better than I do myself. She helps me discover new things about my style. It's kind of like my stylish best friend is shopping with me. You know, that confidence boost you get when you really put on an amazing outfit? That's what I get from Stitch Fix. When I look good, I feel good, and it shows. I'm a firm believer that you have to feel good in what you wear. If you don't, it's not the outfit for you. With Stitch Fix, I just give my stylist my size, style, and budget preferences. I order boxes when I want and how I want, no subscription required, and she sends five just for me pieces, plus outfit recommendations and pro styling tips. I keep what I love and send back the rest. Stitch Fix makes it all so easy. I get outfits that make me look and feel really good, and I don't have to shop. If you don't love something, you just send it back. Shipping, returns, and exchanges are always free. Style that makes you feel as you as you look. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash unlocked. That's stitchfix.com slash unlocked. I'm not trying to put pressure on y'all, but there's no way we can get out of this without asking this question because every single YouTube comment is going to be this. What? So maybe y'all don't know yet, but what do y'all think is going to happen from here? Yeah. I don't think, I think I look at it and I'm like, there's no pressure for anything to happen uh-huh. any which way. Right. I feel like that's the beauty of, like I said, rearranging the furniture, mm-hmm. rearranging your emotional, relational furniture. It's like, it, it was, it looked that way five years ago. It looked a certain way. It looked like tied at each other's hips, super codependent. But guess what? It's okay to rearrange it. And it's okay for it to look different now. And it's okay. Like, granted, would I love to, like, be able to call Chad and be like, hey, like, let's go have lunch. Or what are you doing? Or, like, so that's, like, I would love that relationship. Because at the end of the day, I freaking love you to death. Like, you were part of the biggest parts of my life. Right. So, but going into it and automatically i think that's where people where you can fail at a rekindling is right. by putting all these expectations out there i want to be protective of it going forward and not just because because i know i'm not in a healthier enough space to just fall back right into yeah me being the person that i was in our relationship and and you know losing myself again yeah and unintentionally and not from anything that you would do yeah. you know what i'm saying so I want to go to lunch. I want to yeah. grab drinks. I want to come over for dinner and see Chloe and Grayson and stuff. Yeah. But I think it's just a slow roll back into yeah. our friendship so that we both make sure that we're communicating properly and having healthy boundaries. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, loving each other and taking care of each other and just really communicating. Yeah. Because I'm not going to lie. I miss some of those crazy we wild girl <laughs> crazy fun laughs and adventures and dear god dear, you missed out on some stuff too oh, oh i'm sure you, you should have heard the stories up. our raya raya my raya raya days however you say it the well now listen oh. queen there's some stuff i didn't miss out on because you know <laughs> even your good judy's like to call on chatty daddy and tell him what time it is Stop. so i was rooting for you from the sidelines queen Stop. That is yeah. amazing. Yeah. But I um, do want to hear it from the horse's mouth. You know what oh I'm saying? God, I want to know what you heard. God, see y'all, Nashville, big city, small, small town. Right. But you have to admit this. You ain't never heard me say nothing no. about nothing. I don't repeat no. stuff. I am not he a talker. Does not. He does not. I ain't no drama. I don't like drama. Now, you don't want to back me in a corner because yeah. the house will be on fire. But <laughs> I, I don't normally like... You know, I will just pull away. All your secrets will be in that shallow grave that Chad buried the other bodies Mm -hmm. in. Oh, yes. Shovel lantern. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good place to stop. Well, on that note, I love you. I love you, too.